Sonny Morea is project manager in June 1962, when NASA test fires its first F-1. When we tried to fire it for the first time, it just blew apart. As F-1 engines keep blowing up, engineers finally identify the problem. Combustion instability, uneven burning. If you visualize a candle burning in a room, it flickers from side to side. Well, that's a form of instability. What happens there is that it sees more oxygen on one side, and so it produces more heat, and it pushes the flame over to the side. Well, that flips back and forth maybe five or six times in a second. That same phenomenon happens in our F1 engine, but they don't flip it five times in a second. They flip 2,000 times in a second. Like a massive out-of-control candle, the fire inside the F1 surges back and forth until it destroys the engine. They have no idea how to fix it. The F1 engine is simply too far ahead of the state of the art and too enormous to apply any known theory. The solution had to come by trial and error. You know, you find a way to make one. That's the way it was back then. It was absolutely the seat of our pants. If they can't fix the F1, Apollo is finished. If we couldn't solve the combustion instability problem, we would not have gone to the moon. It was too risky. We would have killed a bunch of astronauts trying to make that work. So the engineers turned to Von Braun's original V2. Why didn't combustion instability destroy that engine? In the V2, liquid fuel and liquid oxygen were injected through a number of separate nozzles. In the F1, fuel and oxygen are injected through a single flat injector plate, like a shower head. The engineers wonder, did the multiple nozzles of the V2 somehow divide the burning into separate zones? If so, perhaps adding metal ridges baffles to the injector plate would create a similar effect in the F1. We broke that into segments with baffles. Hopefully, they wouldn't talk to each other, similar to what the, uh, the V2 had. After many experiments with baffles, eventually they get the engine to run smoothly. Lo and behold, we found out that the baffles were able to uh, attenuate the, uh, the oscillations. But how can they be certain the F1 will work every time? They try deliberately causing the problem by setting off a small explosion inside the engine while it's running. Can baffles stop instability after it starts? We drove it unstable with a bomb. We inserted a bomb right into the center of the injector and blew it just at the time we ignited. With the engine running, the small bomb explodes. The burning becomes unstable. But in a fraction of a second, the baffles quickly stop or dampen the instability. That would drive the engine unstable, and then it would dampen out right away, where before it wouldn't. And every single time, those baffles dampened out the oscillations. 